Okay, I just want to go over some knives, different kinds of knives and tools for the evisceration table. Uh, we're actually going to try some different, uh, a couple of different styles of knives today to see how they react to the fat. All of our knife manufacturers actually design and develop the handles to react to the fat of the animal that's being processed, whether it be beef, lamb, uh, goats, or in this particular case, poultry. So we're going to try some different knives and see how uh, they do, and then we'll have these reports on our website as far as comfortability. The other thing to consider in choosing a knife would be the length of the blade. All of these are relatively short. Uh, three and three quarter inch, I think, is the longest blade that I have here. And uh, so with, with chickens, because of the size of the chicken that you're dealing with, you don't need a huge knife. You're not breaking down like a side of beef. So uh, this is going to be the biggest cut you're going to do is going to be right across here. So a relatively small knife will do the job for you. The other uh, two tools that are on this knife is a pinning knife, or on this table rather, is a pinning knife and a lung remover. And these two, I think, are invaluable. Uh, you don't use them all the time, but when you need them, they're just great. The pinning knife is used like this. You p just simply pinch the, the, the feather between your thumb and pull, and it just pops those feathers out. Um, it's easier than using tweezers and pliers and all those other gadgets that that we use so you can just pop those pin feathers right out of there and uh, don't have to fight with them you can also use it if you do get a bird that's got a lot of feathers in this area you can scrape it such as that to get those feathers out so this one really again doesn't have a whole lot to do so let's go through eviscerating here um, I'm going to start with this is a Dexter Russell 2613 knife it's a good size handle for a guy my size, I'm six foot two, got big hands. It fits my hand quite nice. Um, it is a little bit small as far as the diameter goes, if you will, than something along that line, which is for a big hand um, seems to fit a little bit easier. So we'll start off with this knife, see how this does. First thing we want to do is take the legs off and get rid of the legs. The way we do that, um, I find the easiest way is if you let the weight of the bird work with you. And then you take your knife and you look, there's two mountain peaks right here, okay? And you're going to go be right between those two mountain peaks and make your cut. And if you just work your knife, it goes right down through the joint and it comes off that easy. If you use clippers, which some folks use, um, you usually end up with bone shards and whatnot, which can be, this can end up being broken. So if you allow the knife to do the work, again, there's the two mountain peaks, go right down in between the valley and just cut. So that would be gone. The head uh, is another, there's, there's a, a lot of ways to do it. I find the easiest way is to, because you've already got a cut here, just work around cutting the, the skin. Don't cut through the bone because that's going to dull your knife. Put the bird over the edge of the table and push down and off goes the head. So now the head's gone, the legs are off. The next part we're going to get is the crop. The crop is always on this side, would be the left side as the bird is, is upside down, on the right side if it was on its feet. The crop is right in this area. This is the initial, the esophagus is here, the feed goes into the crop, from the crop it goes into the gizzard. So this oftentimes has feed in it. If you don't take the feed away 12 hours before, you will end up with, um, with feed in there. So you just make a small cut. Now if I cut into the crop, and that's not a big deal, but if you just make that small cut, begin to peel this crop away. Because I took the feed away from them um, over 12 hours ago, it was a, well, it was just about 12 hours from when we started processing, there is basically no feed in this, in this crop. So you pull that crop loose, so it's been taken from the skin and it's been taken from the body, the, the, the chest. The next thing I want to do is get the esophagus, and this is always a little challenging, but break your finger through that membrane. There's the esophagus right there. Pull that out, take, go back through, and you want to take the windpipe out, and there's the windpipe. Windpipe, I always, my grandfather taught me the windpipe's like a flashlight. It's got those ridges on it, it feels like a flashlight. So those are the three things you want, the windpipe, the esophagus, and the crop. Once you get those pulled loose, peel them away a little bit, shake it loose, just let those hang. The next step is to go around the back of the bird, 
Uh, there's two things. Some people like to remove this fat gland. If, if you want to remove the fat gland, simply make a U-shaped cut with your knife and take it off like that. Um, there are those that say that the fat gland should come off because it causes a taste in the meat. There are those that say it adds flavor to the meat. So that's a personal preference. Uh, it is an extra step. It is a little bit more unsightly without it, uh, but it's just personal preference if you want that on or off. The next part, flip the bird back over, put pressure on so your skin is tight. A sharp knife will always cut something that's, that's uh, stretched tight as opposed to something that's loose. Make a cut in, in this area. Now, a big hand guy like me, I've got to make a bigger cut. Smaller hand, obviously a smaller cut. Start to work your fingers into this area, breaking loose the viscera from, uh, the, from everything else that's in the bird. Um, and you, you're breaking the viscera down off the top of the body cavity. Work your hand into the body cavity as far as you can go, breaking loose all of the membrane. Put your fingers around the viscera and pull back and out towards you onto the table. Now, right there is the crop coming through, and right behind it is the windpipe coming through. So if you've loosened those properly, they will come out with, with the gut pile. At this point, what I do is take a and make a U-shaped cut, and we do have some manure on this, so we're going to uh, just pause for a moment and get that manure cleaned off. Alright, so this is the downside of, of gutting on a table. We got some manure on on the bird. I don't think it was on the table, but had it been on the table, then I slide, I slid this bird into the manure, we would now have contamination. Uh, there is some still some manure in the gut, and uh, we're going to do our best to get that off and away from the table. There goes a knife that's now been dropped onto the ground. Outside butchering. So I'm going to make a U-shaped cut, cut below the vent and come up, cut below the vent and come up the other side. And there's the bird and here's the gut pile. Now if you are going to keep the heart, liver, and gizzard, you need to be aware of a couple things. The heart will pull off uh, relatively easy and you can either just pull it and break it loose or you can in this case I'm there would be the heart then we have the the livers and you want these livers to be nice and bright like these are here then you have this little problem that's called the gallbladder and that is this organ right here now this organ, if you cut that, it's going to spray green juice all over the place and it's going to spoil and taint everything on your table. So the way to get rid of that without cutting it is to actually just pinch it off. Start to break the liver away from all the membrane and when you get to the actual gallbladder, pinch it off between your thumb and your finger like I'm doing here. And then, just as a safety precaution, I move off the table and I just pull the liver away and there is the gallbladder and it seals up and does not leak. So there's your liver, there's your heart, and then lastly would be the gizzard. And the gizzard, you just simply peel away anything that doesn't look like a gizzard. Like that. There is your gut pile. This goes into the gut bucket. Uh, and then you you would chill these down. Now while I'm right here, I'll also go over quickly um, peeling a gizzard. 